How's it going everyone? This is Matt Lemire here. I hope all of you guys are having a fantastic day. And today I'm out at Old Sacramento State Historic Park right next to the locomotive shed. And right in front of me, that's out of view of the camera, is the Central Pacific Railroad Depot. And this is all right next to the California State Railroad Museum and I have the appropriate shirt on for today's occasion. Today's video, I wanna focus on one particular locomotive that I have not had the chance to see up close. And I kind of talked about it in my Railroad Museum video. It is one of the three Virginian Truckee engines and is the only one that has been stored outside. And that is the JW Boker. It's the one that has the water pump on top of its boiler. So this is gonna be our first opportunity to check out the engine up close in person. So without further ado, let's get this vlog started. The J.W. Boker was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in February 1875 and was named for John William Boker, the chief mechanic of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. However, just as the locomotive arrived on the V&T a year later in 1876, Boker himself was fired for disorderly conduct. In turn, the locomotive was renamed the Mexico in order for the railroad to avoid tarnishing its reputation. Originally, the Boker operated as a switcher engine in Virginia City, Nevada, where it would rearrange freight and passenger rolling stock, as well as help transport ore out of the nearby Comstock mines. As I mentioned in my Railroad Museum vlog and at the beginning of this video, this engine is noted for the water pump attached to its boiler, used for fighting fires on the railroad. This high-pressure steam-powered pump is known as a Knowles pump. In 1896, the Virginia and Truckee sold the Boker to the Sierra Nevada Wood and Lumber Company in Truckee, California, where it would be renumbered as the company's number three engine. It continued in full operation until it was officially retired in 1917, being stored in the locomotive shed at Hobart Mills in Nevada County, California. The Boker story, of course, doesn't end here as in July 1937, the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society Incorporated acquired the engine and restored it to its original Virginia and Truckee status as number 21. The locomotive would travel across the country and serve as an exhibit at the 1939-1940 New York World's Fair before returning to California. And in 1976, the locomotive was donated to the California State Railroad Museum, which was still in its early days at the time. However, since 1953, the locomotive has not been under steam, although it was brought out to commemorate the 148th anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad on May 10, 2017, where it would ring its bell and with the help of a compressed air supply, blow its whistle. As with some of the other steam locomotives featured in my vlogs, the Boker has also seen its share of the Hollywood spotlight, as it would star in many films throughout the 20th century, such as Cecil B. DeMille's 1939 epic motion picture Union Pacific, as well as in the 1999 Will Smith movie Wild Wild West, where it played the Central Pacific's number 60, the Jupiter. What's even more interesting is that the Boker is one of two surviving engines in the world with a 2-4-0 wheel configuration, the other being the Old Sydney Collieries No. 25 in Delson, Quebec, Canada. For those not familiar with how locomotives are identified, 2-4-0 means the locomotive, without the tender, has two leading wheels in the front to help it move around turns in the track, four driving wheels that provide the primary source of power, and no trailing wheels. Since 1999, the Boker has been painted in her brown 1880s-1890s livery, which in my opinion complements the engine well, and it makes it very reminiscent of the area in which it operated. Before I wrap up the vlog, I do want to talk about some of the other features of this engine. First of which, the Boker is a wood-burning engine, as can be seen with its distinctive balloon stack, designed to prevent sparks from igniting from inside the firebox. And here, you can actually see the bunker where the wood is stored inside the tender, as well as where the engine is filled with water. 
And finally, the last feature I want to point out is this link rod located on the locomotive's pilot, or in other words, its cow capture. YouTuber Toyman Television recently talked about the purpose of this link rod, so I will briefly turn it over to him to explain. When these locomotives were built, they used to use uh, a link and pin coupling. Ooh. And then later on, uh, railroads were required to switch over to knuckle couplers. And uh, for a brief period, they had this, a split knuckle. So you could either couple in using the knuckle coupler or with this pin dropped through the link, you could do link and pin. And they're going to use the link on the front of the Glenbrook and tie that into the split knuckle on the back of the Eureka. Now there's actually two pins that need to be dropped. There's the pin that ties to the link, but knuckle couplers also work with a pin. This pin back here and now they've got to make sure that pin is engaged as well. All right, guys, that's gonna do for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video about the JW Boker. I think it's such a very unique engine. Not only the fact that it was used to fight fires on the railroad, it's also starred in movies, and it's only one of two surviving engines of this particular wheel configuration. I think that's pretty amazing. So I think that's gonna do for today. As always, to get more content like this, remember to tune in same mat time, same mat channel. Thank you for watching guys. Take care and have a good rest of your day.